happening my fellow geeks and geek cats? Welcome to a brand new episode of Cosplay Chris and today I'm going to give you guys a walkthrough on the upgrades to my Pirate Batman cosplay. So essentially this is going to be eventually Pirate Batman 2.0. I've been wanting to do this for a very long time now and it's only because now that Laura is going to be doing her Pirate Catwoman cosplay I thought it was time to upgrade the suit, add some certain pieces of armor and today's video is all about the brand new cow. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely adore the version one cow. I'm very proud of that. That took me so long to make, but there is always room for improvement and it's time for a change. So what I'm gonna be doing today is showing you guys the cow, give you a run through of how I made it, what was used, and also some newly acquired knee pads from an Etsy shop. So firstly, the cow. Now, I am very, very happy with the end result of this. This is mounted on my live cast. I wanted something a bit more beefier and of course, something flexible because if you guys know, if you follow the progress of the version one Pirate Batman cow, that thing is solid resin and it made it very hard throughout the day to wear that thing because it cuts into your ears and everything and it doesn't form to your face quite perfectly like this thing does. So I'm just gonna take it off my live cast like so. Now right away you can spot that this is a Batflex style cow. Now this cow, in particular was made by my buddy Ben. I will leave the links down below to where you can find Ben and all these amazing goodies that he makes. Ben is a fellow cosplayer and bat suit creator. So Ben borrowed my bat fleck cow mold. He took a master of that and he now makes latex copies of this cow. So I thought I'd love to use the bat fleck cow as a base. Ben had made a latex cow for me that fit my head perfectly. So I asked for his blessing. If I could cut the neck off, he said, go for it. Now I still wanted to stick with the pleather leather stitching effect, just like the version one cow, but I wanted a different pattern going on. And of course I want the scratch going through the cow there. So I will have the white contact lens still in my eye. There you go. Just give you guys a nice close up. And seriously, it fits like a dream. Um, I didn't go for the bandana option at the back. This is just some more pleather that kind of, you know, your head fills out, but I'm thinking I might put dreadlocks under there. I still don't know. We're gonna see how it all looks when the new armor arrives and I will explain the other armor pieces that I will be adding on to the suit as is now. Now, all the leather stitching is just there for display and it wasn't a matter of, you know, threading some leather stitching through a needle and doing it bit by bit because this latex is quite thick. It's not overly thick, but still it's something where if you were piercing it with a needle straight away, it would take for ever to stitch. So what I did was I got my sculpting tool that has like a fine point on it and I blasted it with matte gas until it was glowing red and I pierced the holes through the rubber. Now I had to wear a dust mask and ventilation mask because the fumes were just ridiculous. Burning rubber makes you high as a kite. Now to glue these pleather panels down, I used Loctite, but it was a special kind of Loctite. It was like a flexible Loctite. The only shitty part is you get like the tiniest amount for like eight bucks from Bunnings. It's a serious ripoff. So I had to get like 10 of these things just to cover this cow where the pleather was gonna be laid down. You want me to try it on? Nah! No. I'm just kidding. Ah, you, let's do this. Mm. Actually, I'm thinking about doing a Captain America Infinity War cosplay, like the big dirty beard, the hair, the dirty looking uniform. What do you guys think? Like, let me know down below if you guys want to see me do that because I just love that look. It's like the Nomad Captain. It looks brilliant. Anyway, let's try this cowl on. So another thing that I want to work on was the practicality of the cowl and putting it on and off because every time I'd be at a convention, I'd have the original version one cowl off. Someone asked for a photo. You know, it takes a lot of fiddling around, pop it on, position it. You got to tie the bandana and it got really annoying. Whereas the way I've designed this, it slips on and off pretty much like that scene in Batman vs Superman, the nightmare scene where Superman tears the cowl off Nightmare Batman when he's chained up and it just comes off so fluidly. So we just pop it on like so, pull the chin down and there you go, Bob's your uncle. This gives you a pretty good idea of how it's gonna look and like no neck means excellent movement. Again, I've still got some room at the back here so I may put some fake dreadlocks in to drape around uh, my neck. We'll see how it looks when the rest of the armor arrive. All right, and to slip it off, literally all you do is that. I mean, how easy is that? Now, if you guys notice the scratches on the sides, that was achieved with a soldering iron. Obviously, just turn the soldering iron on. I had it on a medium setting so you don't wanna blast the shit out of the pleather and the latex itself. And I just get it and just sporadically scratch it. So it looks as though 
Catwoman's had a scratch of the cow. If you get my drift. <laughs> Stop it, Stanley. So, that is the cow. Very happy with that. Probably still some tweaks to do here and there, but for the most part, I am settled on it. I think it's gonna be a great addition to the 2.0 version of Pirate Batman. Now, the knee pads. Here are the leather bound knee pads. These were made by the Iron Ring on Etsy. Now, these come from Europe and the craftsmanship is just amazing. So, what it is, is it's leather mounted over a fiberglass resin shell. So you can see the fiberglass there and there's the resin pulled there just for added support at the front of the knee. So you've got a leather strap as well. So these obviously go on top of the Pirate Batman steampunk inspired pants. The only thing I'll have to do apart from weathering it, I do want to place some rivets around the perimeter of the kneecaps themselves and really dirty it up. Maybe splatter some blood on there from So what I'm gonna have to do is put a Velcro on the inside there and the other side of the Velcro, attach that to the pants just so they're not gonna slip down or move in any way possible throughout the day at a convention. These were cheap as chips. I will leave the link down below for their Etsy store. These guys do amazing armor work. I can't recommend them enough. It's a perfect addition to the updated suit. So, so what else is gonna be added to this Pirate Batman 2.0 are shoulder pads. Now this is something I've been wanting to do for quite some time because you look at the version one look of Pirate Batman, there is no protection on the shoulders and I have to work really hard to bring out my shoulders. I'm very narrow frame, so it takes a lot of work for me to make myself broad shouldered. I just can't be bothered most of the time. And it makes sense to have some shoulder armor there. So, so there is a shop on Etsy called Steam Viking that makes some amazing looking shoulder and bicep armor. So here is a photo here. Usually they sell them for one shoulder, but I ordered two of them for the right and left shoulder. I think it's gonna look absolutely brilliant. And just give me that broader frame, a bit more bulked up, especially to match the Batfleck inspired pirate cow. So we'll be riveting these shoulder pads to the torso armor. And also I'm gonna be replacing the cape. I've gotten rid of that weathered pleather cape. I do have a much heavier pleather cape. It's a lot thicker. It looks a lot like leather and a lot like bat skin. So I'm also going to be doing a tutorial on how I'm going to be making the cape. I got four meters of this stuff. It was like the last couple of meters left at this funny little fabric shop just down the road. They have some interesting pieces of fabric in there. I just went in there on a chance and found the perfect stuff. Granted, the version one cape was great. It billowed in the wind perfectly, but I want to say a lot more heavier, much like Affleck's cape in Batman vs Superman. So again, just like the knee pads, I will leave the links down below to these two Etsy stores, guys. Check them out. They do amazing work. So I should be receiving the shoulder and bicep armor in about two weeks time. It's supposed to ship out right now, actually. So guys, that is pretty much it for the Pirate Batman 2.0 upgrade. I'm going to be keeping you updated every step of the way when the additional armor arrives and we start to make the cape and eventually the final reveal. Now guys, I know I said I was going to do a Red Hood update video this week on the helmet, but I'm going to leave that till next week because I'm still painting it at the moment. It looks friggin' phenomenal. I'm going to be really sad when I have to weather it because at the moment it's like a pristine Ferrari red. It's all shiny and you <laughs> Guys, wherever you are in the world, have yourselves a fantastic weekend. Hope you're well. Hope you're happy. Be merry. Be silly. And until next time, geeks, please always remember, cosplayers do it best. Oh shit, nearly fell off me stool. Did you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>